let's talk about it. We got ourselves a, a scooter. This is a, a very uh, common uh, mass-produced Chinese scooter. It's, it's white labeled. So in other words, you'll see the same form factor, but it'll uh, have different brands on it. And uh, this is a uh, future champion piece of sport. And uh, the piece of sport, I think that's uh, probably a local seller. But uh, this is what we have. This is the uh, manufacturing information from China. It's one of those 49 cc's uh, scooters. Now, here's the thing. The problem is, right, client said, they turn on the engine, that wheel doesn't spin. As in, there's no power transferring from the engine to this. Let's see if we can replicate the problem, shall we? All right, to start this, you need to go... Turn that on there. There's a safety here. You gotta, like, squeeze the brake to start it. So, put you in a stand. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, when you uh, turn the key on, right, look at the gas gauge here. See how it moves? So you know you're in the right position. All right, so to start it, um, you gotta slide this all the way over to that side, squeeze the handbrake on the left side, and just turn it. I mean, um, push this down. Right, so this is a little loose. You'll see as I press the throttle, nothing happens. Watch the wheel. Right, so that's the problem. We recreated it. Let's try to solve it. So there's not a lot to these uh, systems, you know. You have uh, power from your crankshaft. It's going to be like right here. You have uh, two places to check for drive. You have a cover plate here with belts. <coughs> and this has a uh, eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna pull all those off. Let's see what they look like. And then over here, I should probably, I'm assuming this is gonna be your, uh, drum brakes in there. I don't know. Let's try to pull this cover off first. See right here, there's a clip here. And then I want to look for this right here. the same so far. So they're all the same. There's a gasket in between. I noticed this says oil on there with uh, 0 0.12 liters. So we'll find out what uh, is oil going to come out of here or not? But there's a gasket in between this cover. This is looking for places to pry on. It looks like right here. So right there's a little spot to pry on.
<laughs> There's your problem. <laughs> that belt got chewed to pieces. Wow. Alright, well. That's pretty straightforward. Not much going on there with mystery. Take you in for the carnage. Then to check for any wears and tears on stuff, you know. I check the teeth and these. This is like what's going on here. Wow. I'm hoping that that's fine. I'm assuming that that stays in position because of the case. Yeah. So there might be a bear. Or not. Okay. Feels a little sloppy. You know what I mean? It does shoot out. Oh, it does come out. So, see the teeth? Anything when we see teeth? You always want to just make sure that the, uh, that everything is like, um, That things are not like too smooth or nothing's broken off. You know, so. So that sits right there. Alright, can't do this one handed, but you get the idea. So we get it, we're gonna need a new. So let's talk about what I see here. Um, the gasket itself is shot. This entire gasket needs to be replaced, so we need a new gasket for this. It's like broken off. Some of it's some of it's on here. And uh I'm turning it to hear if I hear any grinding sounds. So, what happens, right? The, you can see this turns the wheel. So, as this clutch expands outwards, right? Because you, as you rev the engine, as the uh, as your load and your uh, demand increases, it spins this clutch out and it grabs this and it turns the wheel. Like that. So these two are halves that kind of like pull apart, separate. And uh, up front here, yeah, this is uh, directly attached to the crank. So it's really interesting how your eye changes. You know, you just get a little bit more familiar with things. But if you look closely. You can see these are all broken off right here. Uh, I'm not sure why they're all broken off. I have to look at the case itself and see if there's something else happening. So that's not good. So we want to. Behind this here is a. Um, I, I think it has a really interesting name, but uh, I believe it's. Um, oh, forgot tell you when I figure it out but we got to get this off to get to that to check to see <laughs> there are a little tiny like round objects that expand 
as this speeds up. That's what we need to try to check and see if the conditions of those things are still round. Okay, if they're flat, then we need to replace it. So I'm not sure if this is like a, um, you know, uh, one of those reverse threads. So I gotta be a little careful with it. Um, it's attached to the crankshaft. I usually don't like to like throw an impact on stuff like this. Yeah, so. Let's do uh, let's do reverse, and then we'll uh, just real lightly so it comes off, and then we'll uh, go the other way. But it looks like it might be reverse. Oh yeah, it's reverse. Okay. So it's a 17 millimeter. We have a washer here. Now this looks like it's a cooling fan of some sort, like the, it blows air, you know? Of that. Washer. This. Oh. Oops. Let's see the, uh, that fell off from the back there. Okay. We get a look. So this is what I was talking about. Um, so these will move. They'll slide right out like that. It's, you know, with centrifugal force. And you can see right here on this one. Uh, oops, sorry. Don't lose that. You can see right here. This... And you see it, it's a little flat. That's not good. That should be round all the way around. It's got a lot of flat surfaces. So this actually fell apart. I'll try to get a better one here. No, this one's pretty flat too. So, flat right there, flat there, flat there. So looks like this needs to be replaced. Yeah, there's no way around it. Mm. See the flat surface? Yeah, okay, so we're gonna have to replace this entire unit also. Uh, it kind of sits like this. And it slides out like that. It just slides back and forth on that as it expands. Okay, so. Cool. I'll give you the name of this when I uh, remember. So this needs to be cleaned. And, uh, we're gonna go. This is a little dust particulate. Get that out of there. Get your goggles. So let's uh, let's scrape all the. Uh, gasket material off. I can't stress this enough and lots of people just don't follow this simple rule. You can't scratch aluminum with a razor. It's just, you know, you're gonna gouge up the uh, aluminum and then what's the point of having it gouged up because it doesn't seal anymore, you know? It's uh, strange. I don't understand. So don't use any uh, razors on aluminum. No matter how skilled you are, or think you are, with like getting the perfect angle not to scratch things. So, there are tools out there to help you out. The roll lock. It's a 
good uh, it's a good choice. Try a little uh, Scotch Bright and uh, WD-40. This Rolock light one. So this apparently it's supposed to be safe for aluminum. Alright, so you want to put this back, and uh, when we do that, we're going to grease things just a little bit, so we're just going to put a little tiny bit of grease on the shaft, not a lot, a little bit on the gears, and a little on this gear, just a light coat. Alright, there's a washer. Here. Let's get a little bit of grease on that. Put that washer on. This tab here, that sits in between that. Or we need to get these gear. Okay, so if you look right here, you'll see that the teeth on this look different right here. It's because that is where it's terminated. It doesn't go any further. So we're gonna go here. Take the kickstart here, push this down so the gears get past that. I'm just trying to mesh this together. There you go, that's meshed together. So now it sits in between there. You notice that this is always this always has tension on it now. So we push the kickstart, that's what it looks like. Okay, and this will be pushing against the uh, the, the, I guess it's the back uh, starter. Uh, mm, it's that weird floppy gear that sticks out. It's a starter, starter, uh, it has a name, Bex or something like that, but it pushes against that so that way you can use this Kickstarter to start the engine also. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing on this side of the case. Because we had a lot of gasket material we got to remove. So, all there, we got a lot of particulates. So, let's uh, blow it off first. Let's get your ear glasses. A respirator would be a great idea right now, also. So you saw me clean the other side, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean this. <laughs> so 
this is 916. So I'm gonna take the uh, this this um, off because I need to get to the gasket behind there to clean it properly. So this is again 916. So now I can get all this gasket material off. I cleaned up quite nicely. job right so we're just gonna get all this like these particulates dust and stuff it's like most of it's the roll lock and gasket left over got that clean out So this has some identification information I couldn't see before. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's, maybe that'll be useful for someone. So I cleaned the clutch out a little bit and I noticed that uh, inside of here are some roller bearings. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna wanna grease those. So got my high temperature grease here. Cool. You can inspect it. You should also inspect the teeth right here on the clutch. I mean, on this uh, shaft to make sure it's not worn too much. And then these uh, shoes need to be measured so you can get an idea how much uh, thickness is on left. It's with inspect so that we can know you can have to replace this or not. Too crazy with the torque on this. What's up, what are you doing today? I'm gonna turn this down some. Yeah. Okay, so with this variator, what you want to do is uh, this is the new one, and uh, you can see that all these weighted. Parts are these round parts are all round. They're not flat like the old one. All right. And then you just want to line this up 
like that. Okay. So on this side here, so it slides into the uh, shaft here. So just put a little bit of grease inside of it, just a little bit. You don't want to add too much because uh, eventually the uh, the dust well probably can shaft it do it like that. It's gonna be a lot of like uh, dust in here from the uh, belt decaying. So you just want to slide that on like that. Yeah. Okay, good. And. I kept this together so I can get the orientation of stuff so you can see what's happening here. We got this big gear. Uh, this is like, because of uh, these blades, so it's like a cooling mechanism of some sort. We got a washer, and we have, uh, I'm not really sure what that's called. You'll see this. That's probably the problem with those two COs. Yeah. So we're gonna go like, like this. Let's see. Let's see it belt rides right here against this. Alright, so we gotta um, we gotta expand this, right, to get the belt to slide down. Because this is a spring in it right here, the clutch. So what we do is kind of just get this snake this in at first. Yep. Now to resolve that, right, we're gonna have to go like this. Take a long screwdriver or pry bar wedge it in between here and we're just going to push the clutch open like that expand the spring and then that will go on top of there right so you notice already because we expanded it the belt slid down so we have some more leverage so it's going to go as far as it can there you go so it's kind of going to sit right there now the belt right remember this okay see that right there the belt sits on this part right here so you just kind of want to get that on there make sure it's clean you don't want to have any like uh, grease or oil on it okay so slide that on sorry slide that over that and then slide that on okay so this part has a couple names uh, starter clutch is one of them and the other one is called Bex it's like a, it's like a, like a magnetic clutch it's pretty amazing when you think about how it works but yeah, anyway uh, we're gonna spend a little time clean this off a little bit I'm using some brake parts cleaner and what you want to do right is uh, inspect the teeth on this make sure that uh, they're not too worn or broken off. Let's slide that in back here. There you go. Oh, what's up, man? How you doing today? Yeah. Good, good. And we'll put a little bit of grease on this side also. Because this is going to sit inside of the case. This is a 17 millimeter. Um, it does have a torque spec with it. I don't, um, don't know it right now, but I can tell you one thing. I, I lowered the torque on the gun because I don't want to rip this bolt off and strip anything. I'm just gonna like tap it a couple of times real quick. There you go. See it just went in a little further. It's nice and flush. So we've got this all cleaned up. I want to put the gasket on. This is the gasket. It's a set. I only want that one for now. Let's put that on there, see if that fits. All right, so let's give this a test and see if uh, it actually uh, turns the wheel. I don't have any weird grinding sounds. All right. Something's not right here. So we have smelling scent of rubber being burnt, right? Turns the wheel a little bit, but doesn't work right. But you can see right here, we have some rubber of the belt being burnt away. So something's not spinning correctly. 
and I don't know what it is. Let me think about it for a second. Yeah, the belt looks kind of wonky to me. You know, it doesn't feel like it sits correctly. I don't really know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's right. That, that, that setup's not right. That belt's supposed to be right here on this. Right here, so look at what you shouldn't do. Okay, got it. Don't do that. All right, so I definitely recognize something that I, I'm, <laughs> this thing was on backwards. Yeah, uh, don't talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, I'm gonna put that on there. <sighs> all right, all right. There you go, now it's all straight. Concave part is gonna be out like that. I really want to get this seated because there's some teeth right here for that. Let's see. Let's see this possible. Okay. Push, push that in because you need all the space you can get. those teeth right there you want to make sure those teeth are exposed because this this has little tiny grooves right here that has to sit and key, get keyed into those teeth so, so it looks like this it's like a sandwich See how it slid on those teeth there? This also has some teeth on the back. That has to go get onto that also. All right, that's so much better now. You can see how much straighter it is. I was wondering why it was kind of like cockeyed to the side, and that should do it. All right, we're gonna hit it with like a this is 17 millimeter. Same thing we've done, same process we did before. So what I'm gonna do to spray out the uh, particulates for my aggressive misalignment. Alright. You ready? Let's really test this. Success. What do you think? I think so. so this is our gasket. Some kids are coming, so they'll probably make noises. But anyway, these are some. This is the gasket, and. Um, if you ever want to buy this gasket, you want to make sure you uh, measure the distance from here to here. And uh, there's two There's two of them. One of them is uh, short. <laughs> Sorry, the kids. Uh, one of them is short and the other one is long. So this is the short case. And uh, this one works. So remember, there's a long and a short case. Uh, to help with the lining up with the gasket, uh, these uh, guide pins here, what what you want to do is uh, use them to like help. So, go like this. Like this, sorry. Put that guide pin in, like that.
Did we talk about measurement? Yeah, I think we did. Let's talk about it again. I got measure from here to here, the longest side and the widest side from here to here when you're looking for this uh, gasket. And only, you only get two choices for this motor. Um, this is the short one, so it's pretty straightforward. All right, so we're gonna keep some, get some bolts. Here. Use these to try to like uh, help us keep this in place. Right, so. Let's kind of like put it in like that. Slide it in, see? That's what I just did. I'll do another one like right, uh, right. Where is moving a lot? I think, I think right here is also good. Just want to try to hold it in place. Then, so flip that over. I should put one up top here. Then that's a good idea. Oh, you go with the cars too? <laughs> huh? You do the car? Listen, I got this Acura TL 2000, the water pump. Oh, yeah? I've got cracked in it. Oh, man, that's a big job. Yeah, I think they said I got raised in the morning. Yeah, that's a big job, man. Yeah, I could do it. Yeah? Yeah, but I'm not cheap. Not a, well, listen, they was going to charge me. I know, I know you wasn't going to charge me. The shop was going to charge me. Who's that? The shop I was going to. How much is they going to charge you? 600 I'll do it for five. All right, say less. All right. You be right here all the time? Nope. Just sometimes. Oh, no, take my number. Uh, 2-1-5. Six four five. Six four three. Six four five. Yeah. Twenty eight twenty seven. Twenty eight twenty seven. Yeah. Name that. I'm gonna call you right now. All right. Okay. Let me know when you're ready to do it. there that's how you uh, negotiate people think sometimes you know you're working on stuff like you're some super cheap mechanic or something and I'm like uh, no not really you know because what happens is you got to build properly because when that stuff breaks right they're gonna harass you uh, it comes back to you you know you gotta pull it all apart again you're like all right, that's gonna be painful get a bill appropriately to match your uh, to match the comeback you know, if something comes back you got to be ready to deal with it at least if you want to do good business anyway that is and also you know you need to make a profit like I got to do a project I need to also be prepared to like invest in myself you know like I need to get a High-end OBD2 uh, bi-directional uh, tool, you know. So, how's that going to happen without me billing appropriately? And I need to save money for retirement. That's why I said at retirement. Oh, you get the point. We'll just button this all up here. Call it a quits. All right, but hey, listen. Let's talk about. It. Hey, hope you liked this video. It was a lot of fun working on this vehicle. It's new for me. Uh, you saw I kept a, a, a little like the newbie mistakes in there. Could have edited them out, make it look like I'm perfect, but I'm not. Uh, but anyway, it was a pleasure working on it. Hope you liked it. I want you to, uh, if you can, mosey on over to the uh, comments section and uh, don't talk too much trash, but uh, say something meaningful so others can learn. And uh, thanks for hanging out, you know? It was fun working on this. I look forward to hanging out with you again and working on some more stuff. Hopefully, things like this. I do like motorcycles. All right. Don't forget, thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. 
and the notification bell. All right.